Hello everyone, uh, welcome to a hopefully very quick tutorial and tour of my new Lister Max for Live device. Um, I want to thank everybody up front for their interest and um, for purchasing the device. I really uh, appreciate your interest. I hope you find it as useful as I do. Uh, I'm going to jump right in here. I set a couple things up ahead of time. Uh, Lister triggers some lists together, uh, synchronized, and those lists contain uh, pitch values, velocity, duration, and chance values that are put together in groups of four to produce um, a note, a mini note, unless chance determines that the note should not play. But um, even in that instance, um, Lister considers that group of data to be triggered and it moves on to the next one. Um, so here you can see I have a, a group of five MIDI note names that include um, register. When, when dealing with pitch lists and Lister, you can either use this format or you can use uh, MIDI numbers. And I've used a group of five because we're going to use uh, five note rhythmic groupings um, or subdivisions. That's uh, how many smaller beats you have in a bigger beat. I refer to those as tuplets. So we have five tuplets here in one big beat. We're going to keep it really simple and use a single velocity right now and a single duration. And we're going to have a single chance of one. So every time. The trick, the list is moved. We're gonna hear something. I have we're <clears throat> well. Let's see here. Yeah. All right. So obviously, I've turned this voice on. You have up to six voices. The others are turned off, so they have to be turned on individually. That's just to try to minimize processing. Uh, you know, CPU drainage. Um, we have two big general modes. That would be step and rhythm. Step allows the user to trigger um, list parameters one at a time per incoming MIDI trigger note, you know, as opposed to rhythm, which is going to trigger these lists in in rhythm. And um, you could, if you if you don't want uh, a pitch to play every um, subdivision, you can enter letters into the list to make space. But right now we're going to play a pitch um, in every subdivision possible. I've set over here in the um, list trigger area, I've turned one of them on and I've set C3 as the um, triggering pitch to um, you know, trigger some, some event. And this MIDI note is coming from this clip that I've created. It's the main way I've been using the Lister when I'm not triggering externally. So we've got a trigger every two big every two beats. We've got a BPM of 70. Um, we're not looped right now, so let's let's oh let's talk about sync and free. So when you're in rhythm mode, you have a choice between sync and free modes. Um, if you're using an external device, triggering uh, events live, you're going to want to probably use the free mode. Sync um, automatically quantizes all of these notes to the transport. So that means if the first of all, if the transport's not on, um, you're and you're in rhythm and sync mode, you're, you know, nothing's going to happen unless the transport is on because sync means that the whole that everything is in sync with the transport. So you're going to want free if you want, you want to want to be in free mode if you're going to, if you want to uh, be free from the from the transport. Loop just loops uh, these lists when we're in in rhythm mode. Otherwise, when you're in step mode, yes, the the, the loops. Or I'm sorry, the lists loop, but not rhythmically. Um, toggle loop means that when we're in rhythm mode, you could instead of just um, triggering the start of the loop every time that uh, your trigger note comes in. You could toggle 
um, that loop on and off and the play on and off. So, you know, you the first incoming note triggers the loop and it's playing, and then the next one with the same MIDI value comes in and it and it turns it, it turns it off, and then when the next one comes in. It continues where it left off. If you if you want to start over again, then you would turn on the uh, let's see. You would turn no start, no restart. You would turn that on. Um, or if you, yeah, I'm sorry, if you wanted to start over again, you would turn that off. Otherwise, the default is no no restart. I'm gonna go back to. Actually, I'm gonna turn on both of these off. So. That's, that's the main um, kind of modes of the device. Um, we can trigger changes in tuplet values with incoming MIDI signals or notes. Um, you, uh, we can increase and decrease the tuplet value, and we set a range here, or we can trigger a random uh, value within that range, or we can create a list of tuplet values, and we can, uh, every time we get a MIDI note that matches the trigger value here, we can change the tuplet value. Uh, with all these triggering areas, so we can trigger tuplet changes, we can trigger changes in uh, preset settings, and we can basically preset recall, and we can, you know, obviously trigger the lists themselves. Um, each one of these triggering areas has a count value and a chance value. The count value means that um, Every time a MIDI note matches the trigger value, it, it um, triggers, in this case, uh, one out of one times. Uh, or, you know, if we set it to two, it would be one out of two times, one out of three times. Um, whereas chance would be, you know, if we change this to two, the chances would be one out of two that the values would be triggered um, at all. So if they're not triggered, then we're still in the same position, if you will, in the list. As opposed to this chance here, which this just, whatever um, pitch, duration, and velocity values this number in the list is lined up with, um, same thing, one out of that number chance that those values are going to be triggered. However, in this case, when you're using the chance list, we're still going to um, move forward in the list for the next event. So um, I think I've gone over most of it. Let's talk about weight. Weight would be when a um, change in list occurs or value in the list. Do you want to wait for the play of the list to finish before um, the new list is created? And stop sync would be, you know, when the transport stops, do you want the play the lister to stop playing? Usually, you, you probably do. Uh, I'll go, I'm going to go over list management in one second. Let's just hear this for a second. So um, I, I can't remember if I mentioned or not. I'm This is an old computer, and when, since I'm making a video, we're probably going to experience some, some glitchy, laggy stuff. Um, maybe some CPU issues, but hopefully not, but let's see. Yeah, so I'm hearing a little, not quite as accurate as it usually is. Those computers can't quite handle making a video, but we're gonna continue on. So, I'm gonna put it in loop mode. Let's trigger tuplet value changes save this pitch list here to my presets. Uh, I toggle this on, I say save to preset. And now it's it's stored in my preset list. If I wanna, any, anytime I wanna do anything here in the list management system, 
this determines what which list I'm operating on. So I maybe keep it turned off so that if you accidentally hit clear or something, you don't clear list. But let's say I want to open pitch list up and look at a text document, then I can make changes to this. Or I could even um, you know enter lists this way. So oops, let's say um, you know, just entering some stuff in here. You just have to keep to the format here. So your index number with a comma, the space in between everything, your numbers or MIDI note names, and then the semicolon at the end. So then you, when you're done doing your editing, you close, you validate, and really important, you, you have to save the edit. This is just because of some limitations to the uh, max objects that I use to build this. So I just could not find a way to avoid that. So um, you can you know manage each list separately this way. There's we don't have anything saved right now, but you know I could open my velocity list if there was one and, and do the same thing. Um, let's reverse this list and also save it. So now we have oh for some reason we have oh right I forgot I forgot I added another list. So now we have three lists in the in the pitch preset. Um, so let's get it playing again. And we'll we'll trigger some some changes in preset over here. For the purposes of making a as quick as possible tutorial, that's it. Again, um, please email me with any bugs, concerns, problems. I, I want to make sure that uh, this device is doing what it's supposed to be doing. All right, take care. I hope you enjoy this and uh, find the device useful.